Hello, my name is Galit Lahav and I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Systems Biology at Harvard Medical School. I'm happy to visit Cell Press office today and to speak with Dan Wenstock about what happens after authors submit their manuscript to Cell. Hi Dan. Hi. So we worked hard, we completed a manuscript, uploaded everything online and we clicked the submit button. What happens next? Well, the manuscript lands on the editorial assistant's desk and it's his or her role to help the authors make sure that everything has been uploaded and that it's formatted properly to be compatible with the online system. So there are lots of components that we need. Um, the editorial assistant or EA will make sure that all of those components are there, all the figures, all the supplemental data, um, and that there won't be any problems caused by the specific format that, that, that a particular file is in or anything like that. Once that's done, then the EA will pass the manuscript to the scientific editors, and um, that team of scientific editors will select a specific handling editor uh, who will then manage the rest of the editorial and peer review process. So is the handling editor the person deciding whether to send the manuscript for review? Essentially, yes. So the, usually what happens is that the handling editor in the best position to read the manuscript carefully and thoroughly, think about the background literature um, that came before, and then report back to the team to discuss how uh, the paper compares to the specific editorial criteria of the journal. Mm -hmm. Generally, we expect that that whole process from submission to deciding whether or not to send the paper out for review will take a few days, within a week. So at, at that point, when deciding you know, whether to send for a review or not, I think as authors it will be most helpful to know what editors are looking for when making this crucial decision. Sure. Uh, well, a lot of criteria go into it. Uh, the most obvious is the conceptual advance of the paper. What, what conclusions can you draw from the data in the paper that you couldn't have from the pre-existing literature? Um, in thinking about that, it's also helpful to think about who's reading the paper. So you're talking about the, e the editors and the general readers of the journal, um, many of whom won't have direct expertise in that specific field. So it's very helpful to write in a very clear style, um, avoiding excessive speculation, mm -hmm. so that the reader can really focus on the direct implications of the work. The handling editor will also think about the logic of the paper. So uh, are the experiments that are included in principle sufficient to draw the conclusions that the authors want to draw? If the paper does not meet the specific editorial criteria of the journal, then the handling editor will return it to the authors without review, um, the idea there being that that's going to save both the authors and any reviewers um, quite a bit of time. So let's talk a little bit about the um, selection of reviewers. Mm -hmm. How reviewers are selected? Well, the, the handling editor, again, is the one who will select specific referees. And what that handling editor is thinking about is to have a pool of reviewers who, for one thing, have sufficient technical expertise in the specific approaches that the authors have taken. Uh, those reviewers should also be familiar with the concepts in the paper and interested in the topic. <laughs> um, and sometimes most importantly, the reviewers should be constructive. They should be people who are thoughtful and who will hold the work to an appropriate standard but not um, an excessive one and who will have good suggestions for uh, additional experiments if those are needed to strengthen the validity of the claims. And I know that many times authors suggest reviewers. Do editors pay attention to that? Absolutely. Suggestions are really helpful. Um, I mean, we're always looking to expand our reviewer pool um, to get new people who are up and coming and are thoughtful about their field. Um, so that's, that's always very much appreciated. Uh, the flip side of that is that we're also dependent on authors to let us know if there's someone who should be excluded from the peer review process. So sometimes there are personal conflicts or more often there's just direct competition on a particular project. Then um, we want to ensure a fair and balanced review process. So um, 
we certainly want to avoid inviting anybody to review the paper who would have a conflict of interest who might introduce some bias. Uh, most cell press journals ask that authors limit themselves to excluding no more than three specific individuals who might have that conflict. There's also the editorial board members. W what is their role in uh, this process? So that varies a lot according to the type of journal that you're talking about. At, at cell press journals, the editorial board plays uh, an advisory role that's very important. I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but they, the editorial board does not serve as handling editors for the papers. So that means that editorial board members won't see a specific paper unless they're actually invited to review that paper. Um, so in their advisory capacity, the editorial board uh, in general may uh, suggest changes or revisions to editorial policy. Um, editorial board members with expertise in a specific field may be consulted to help the editors determine what the standards should be for the journal in that field, what editorial criteria should be applied to specific approaches used in that field. Uh, and last but not least, we also hope that our editorial board will serve as ambassadors to the wider community, um, perhaps suggesting that authors uh, submit a particularly exciting paper to the journal. So in conclusion, can you perhaps summarize um, all the events that happen after submitting a manuscript to one of Cell Press journals? Well, the first step is that the editorial assistant will help the authors make sure that all the right components of the paper have been uploaded and are formatted appropriately so that the online system can handle them. Uh, the next step is that a handling editor will be chosen from within the scientific editorial team. That handling editor will then lead the discussion of whether or not to send the paper out for review. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the handling editor, if the paper does go out for review, will choose specific referees. Okay, thank you, Dan. All right. That's really helpful. Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.